couple days. Look at that. I'll be doing the odd couple during Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. I'm a worker. Well, so is Joy. You know well, that. I'm taking a good uh, country tour for <laughs> going to Kansas City first. Yes. Their old family's from Kansas nice. City. Nice. Going to Pittsburgh. Yeah. It's not like you're going to Bahamas. Right. Kansas well, City, Pittsburgh. The holidays, you know. <laughs> you know, you know, Chris, a little snow. Okay. So I Charles Woodson comes out and says with Brady, listen, man, it's catching up with him. And I'm thinking, oh, God, Rob, love that. You already know. He's right on the money. I've been saying this for like three years now. And finally, Tom Brady's paying dividends. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this is the thing. He couldn't even throw the ball out of bounds the other day. Come on, Colin, you got to admit. No, I, it's funny. The announcers wouldn't say it. Okay, was it Jim Nance and Romo? They wouldn't say it. But Brady couldn't get the because they like him. Right. And they want to be respectful. And they're both awesome dudes. He couldn't get it out of bounds. But if you hear the Patriots, we've been playing this on the radio, Fox Sports Radio. The Patriots play-by-play uh, -play -play guys, they're like, it's the worst decision that he's, you know, like the worst throw he's made in 10 years. They called it. And these were the, the hometown, uh, hometown announcers. But if you're a Patriots fan, you've got to be honest with yourself. And here's the, the, the problem. We know if they play at home, they always have a good shot when they've had the buys and they've played at home. Yeah. But on the road, Tom Brady's terrible. I don't even know what other word to use. Tom Brady's had a worse time on the road than Dorothy and Toto. I mean, that's how bad it's been for him. 50, and look at the numbers. 50, look at his six. One in four, 55% completion rate, six touchdowns, eight interceptions, and a passer rating of under 70%. So as he – now, I think it's the real thing is that – I said this. The Spurs and the Patriots dynasty, this is how dynasties decline. They don't fall off a cliff. You don't get terrible. But Duncan and Brady are not on steroids, so they're not going to hit 70 jacks. This is what happens to dynasty. The star player ages gracefully, and the Spurs couldn't win that big game on the road. They could still beat you occasionally at home. But right now, New England, to me, is not good enough to win big road games against really good quarterbacks. Is that and fair? There's no doubt about it, and that's what people have to realize. That's why this whole idea of them making a run, they've never won a Super Bowl when they've had to go on the road, let alone at this age and, and how he's playing. And here's another thing. Here's a nugget for you. Mark Sanchez, in his six road playoff games, four and two. Tom Brady in his last uh, five, it's one and four. I'm just saying, Tom Brady, w when people think about him, some of the, I would say this, he has been aided, there's no question, that division, Joy talked about this yesterday, for 18 years, Chad, Pennings did, Chad Pennington is the best quarterback Tom's had in the division. So Tom has gotten a bye in Foxborough in January, and there's, by the way, He's won a lot of last-second games. He would have not have won at Denver, at Indy, at, at other places. No doubt. And that's why I've always had the dialogue about him being the load as well. What? The luckiest of all time. Because, <laughs> come on, Colin, when you add up all the things that have happened, and it doesn't mean he's not skillful, he's not a great quarterback, but the stars have aligned so many things Some have. to make it easier. All I'm saying is you just said it. If you have a bye and then two home games to get to the Super Bowl, yeah. don't tell me that's not an easier road than if you have to go on the road and play three games before you even get to the they Super Bowl. They didn't luckily get a bye. They, exactly. That, I, I yes, would, they do because they get they get five or six wins before the season even starts they, they because have, of the AFC lease. Well, they, they have played in a... Uh, they played in a, in a relatively easy position well, because of the dysfunction of the other three teams yeah, in right. the division. They That's do play. I mean. It's the most dysfunctional division. The Steelers have the Browns and the Bengals in, in their division. But they division. have the Ravens or twice a year a legit franchise. And the they Ravens went to Miami the Super Bowl. every year in December. I, I know, but Miami, Buffalo, and the Jets, they're really dysfunctional. All I'm saying is luck favors the prepared. It's not an accident that they work hard for that bye week. But a lot of stuff has just happened for him, and he's capitalized. I'll give him that. But I still think he's one of the luckiest athletes I've ever seen. By the way, Dak had a rough Sunday. I suppose you're going to beat up on him. He didn't have a rough Sunday. He had a Dak Sunday. That's not <laughs> the real Dak Prescott. And it's the nightmare that most Cowboy fans are living. You notice, know Colin, deep down, they want the Cowboys to lose. They do. They want them to lose their last two games, miss the playoffs.
so that they don't – Jerry Jones doesn't sign this guy. He's not going to be that guy. He's not the franchise guy you give $30 million to. He's 25th in passing yards, 20th in touchdown. I mean, go look at it. He's at the bottom on all the, the, the quarterback uh, stats. So he's not really that guy that you want to have – long term or think you're going to win a championship with he is who everybody knows he is which is every so often he'll win some games make some throws but for the majority of the time it's going to be the bad Dak Prescott that you saw get shut out for the first time since 2003 the Cowboys and we could go through a list of bad quarterbacks who played for the Cowboys who never got shut out Quincy Carter and all these other guys who played you know back in the day but Dak gets shut out. It is it is disturbing to get shut out in 2018. It, it's hard to get shut out. I mean, they, the, the uh, NFL, and I agree with the NFL, has made it so you get 14 possessions. Like last night is you had good quarterbacks, and it's late in the year. I don't know. A shutout to me, it, it is hard to be shut out. Andy Dalton's not getting shut out. Uh, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick's lighting up the board. It right. Is, That's what I'm saying. Finally. I think what the Lakers are doing, Joy just had a stat, is remarkable. I think you have to be very optimistic about where the Lakers are at. They're going to beat Brooklyn tonight. Are they really? Brooklyn's won five in a row. Do not just discount that it's automatic. What are you talking about? You don't. You don't by the way, Joy just told us LeBron's numbers are better through 30 games than they were in Miami. Cleveland's Laker team is young and fantastic. It tells you how much he has to put in just to be able to win, that they need every point and everything from LeBron because that team is not as good as advertised. That's the real – would you say Brandon Ingram's lived up to, to standard? No, he hasn't. Okay, Alonzo Ball, he has a good game every once in a while. Has he lived up to standard? No. Okay, so I'm saying LeBron has to play that hard and put up those numbers. They've been an unimpressive 18 and 12 to me. You've seen the, the stinkers. You've seen a couple of good games where they've beaten some good teams, but it hasn't been impressive at all. They're not even on pace to win 50 games. Everybody said, oh, yeah, LeBron's going to win 55 games and be in the Western Conference Finals. I don't think anybody honestly can say for sure that they're going to be there when it's all done. Okay, take Golden State out. Who else is there in the West? All those teams, Houston? That, are, all those teams that are struggling – and haven't played up the part, they at least have a track record. This Laker team doesn't have the track record, and, and they've been playing the last couple of years in meaningless games, and now we'll wait and see. They had a nice run. If you go back and really look at the run that they had when they won those 14 out of 16 and 20, those, those were a lot of bad teams that, that line up in the NBA for you. All I'm going to tell you is last year, the difference between the third seed and the A seed last year was two games. So very easily, everybody thinks they could be the number two seed. They could be the number seven or eight seed, match up with a better team in the first round, and get knocked out. It's not inconceivable. Don't you, you know, it is interesting about this, though, is that do you think right now, today, though, Houston's a mess. Do you think LeBron regrets coming to L.A.? Because I think, I think it's about what he thought it would be. I don't, I don't think he regrets it because I don't. I, I always say this. I don't think he came here to win championships. I think he came here for the lifestyle, his life after basketball, and all that stuff he wanted to get started, which is fine. And if he wins, it's cool. I think LeBron is cool with where he is in his legacy. He won three championships, right? He went to a lot of finals. He's going to pass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in points, and he has all these other th accolades. Yeah. And I think if he wins, fine. But if he doesn't win with these guys and nobody comes to play with him, Colin, he'll just say, you know what? I tried. I tried to make it happen. It didn't happen. Hour three next. There's this thing called the internet. The internet. 